Hey guys, I've got another fun soap to play around with today. The second of the spearhead soaps that I got in a recent bulk purchase. And I'm excited to try this one out because that first one I tried out, terrific lather, really happy with it. And this is close to the same formulation. I was able to see the release documentation that he has online. And apparently as he was experimenting with different soap bases, he would often put them with a different scent. And so for instance, this is the clary sa uh, cedar, clary sage, and bergamot. And the version 20.1 was only offered in this scent, according to that documentation. And so once he settles down and figures out the base he wants to go with, I'm sure then he will, uh, you know, we won't have to worry about as much about the version numbers and that sort of thing. And, and then he'll be able to offer all of his different, whatever scents he wants. Uh, in that one soap base. but So this is a journey soap. It was a um, uh, an experimental iteration as he was searching for just the right formula. And 20.1E uh, was the one I tried before. This is 20.1. I'm confident that it's going to be great. In terms of performance, I may not like the scent, but I know the performance is going to be good. I'm going to put a pole silver. It's only been used twice in the razor because I haven't tried a pole silver in this Game Changer Open Comb 68 Gap head. So I'm looking forward to that. It's been a good razor for me with several different blades. This is on loan from a user uh, named Gape who is very generous. He uses this base plate a lot and actually purchased a backup. And so he said, hey man, I'll send you the backup. You can try it out and uh, and just have and just figure out if you if it's one you really like because the 68 solid bar is too mild for me there are only a few blades that worked well uh, for me and and cut well most of them were too it just didn't leave me with a good enough shave and we've got a little bit of a task ahead because one and a half day uh, is the growth that i've got on currently but i've never really had a problem if it's a good blade it always takes care of this kind of thing and typically, with an open comb of the same model razor, the same game changer, the same gap, 68 open comb versus 68 solid bar, typically the open comb is going to be a little bit more aggressive than the solid bar version. Now, I found an exception to that recently. The Tatara Masamune, the solid bar head, does not have as much blade support underneath the blade edge, close to the edge. And so, the uh, because it has that drain hole on the base plate, and so there's, no, there's not support close to the edge, the open comb version goes right to the edge because it doesn't use that drain hole because the comb lets the uh, your stubble and the soap drain away through the comb. And so there's no hole, there's no slot that's been drilled through under there. And so the coverage of the blade, um, the support from the bottom close to the edge of the blade edge is much more uh, firm and strong and closer to the edge with the open comb. And so for me, I found the open comb smoother and much more enjoyable and a razor that I would be likely to use again than the solid bar. And so there are some exceptions to that rule about open combs. Uh, even in the same model, being more aggressive. There is a myth that all open combs are aggressive, and so new guys should stay away from them. But that's just a myth. It all just depends. Folks like Fatip, Carve, Game Changer. Um, that's all that jumped into my mind. There was one more I thought about. Um, and Tatara. You know, those are great examples where they've got smooth open combs available for sure. All right, so let's get to this shave. Oh, the P10, I believe this is, from Zenith. It's a silver tip. I just gave it a Weems mug uh, cleaning treatment, hopefully to remove any oils. If the person that had it before me treated it with conditioner, hopefully we've worked some of that away so that we can have those natural fibers do what they need to do best. And we will get, he's, he's nice and wet, but I'm still going to put him in a uh, cup to soak. I do have hard water and it's cool water these days. Let's put these pole silver in place. As I shave more and more with the pole silver blades, these shaves may become less and less relevant. 
right? It seems like it's been true that they've been discontinued. Maybe they were discontinued before. And it's just that it took a while for the distributors to run out of stock because these kind of blades are something that they can churn out in mass quantities. All right. Now the game changer, you do have the posts on the base plate instead of on the top cap. But I put the blade on the top cap anyway and then just kind of wiggle it so that everything aligns. And then just screw it in slowly to make sure that everything is touching the right places and lined. And I've never had a problem with alignment with this one. It's a very nice, precise fit. So looking forward to trying out the pull silver blade. So here's the cedar, clary sage and bergamot. In a sense, it's almost like giving you a review of an old uh, discontinued soap because you may not be able to get a hold of this already, but maybe then it'll be archival footage for uh, when Spearhead becomes huge and it's one of the common names. This will, you know, <laughs> who knows what, who knows what'll happen. All right. So we've got a nice wet brush. Let's do the 30 second soak up. Ah, before that, let me wet my whiskers. One of these days I'm going to do a test. I've got a friend online who uh, thinks that leaving your whiskers less wet is better because it keeps them rigid. Some things get floppy when they get wet. And so if you've got floppy stubble, then maybe it's bending out of the way of the blade. If it's not floppy and it's more rigid, then maybe you're able to get a cleaner cut. Interesting theory, right? One of these days I'm going to try it out, see if I can approximate that effect. All right, we'll just do a 30 second load. I'm going to shake out as usual much of the water uh, in your own, you know, shaving world. Try it different ways. Only shake out a little bit and, uh, and see what happens. We'll go to the zero mark of the next minute. It'll probably be way too much soap, but we're just covering our bases here. But uh, shake out different amounts of soap. That might shortcut you to a, a really good lather without having to spend as much time adding water. So you can definitely do that. Just moderate pressure here. You can switch up directions if you want. I don't think it matters too much. If you have a long loft brush, like some of those Omega bores, then you may find that the tips of your brush stay in the middle of the soap. Or if you have a tub that's kind of small, as you're moving around, the tips may stay in the middle. And I think that's not a very good situation for gathering soap. You may find that you have to work it a lot longer. So there's a couple things maybe you could do. Reach down and grab some of the hairs so that you shorten the loft of your brush so that those tips can travel around in the brush, in the soap, instead of sitting in one spot. Uh, you could also... Uh, try uh, scooping out instead of brush, instead of loading from the tub, scoop out a quarter of a teaspoon is a good starting point for most soaps and smear that in the bottom of your uh, lather bowl. And then you don't, you've got plenty of room for those, the lagging of the uh, bristles to, uh, to work the soap properly. The scent here is not very strong. I'm not getting too many clear notes, just smelling it from the tub here. I definitely smell a little bit of the sage. I don't know that I smell too much uh, bergamot. A little bit of the cedar. So we'll see how it's lathered. It may be pretty mild. All right, so now we'll take our lather bowl. It's 3D printed, one that I've used for so long. And you can find the links to it in my description of the video. If you want to download the plans, print it yourself. All right, now I'm traveling and I forgot to bring in a packing rush. I forgot to check my list and bring my syringe, which is what, which is what I so often use. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of water and just do it gradually. I'm afraid also I forgot to bring my mirror mount 
and so I'm not able to aim you down at my lather bowl like I usually am. I've got my phone rubber banded to a shower rod. After you work it for a little bit, add a little bit more water. Often three teaspoons or so is what is needed for a soap and so don't have to add it drop by drop. Unless of course you left more water in your brush like I was telling you you could do if you wanted to try that out. And that just means less water you have to add at this stage. However, there are a few soaps out there like uh, Mystic, Mystic Water. You don't want to come at them with a, a heavy wet brush and you don't want to add a bunch of water right away. The soap doesn't act well with that. But as long as you work it for a little bit before adding any water, then from that point on, you can kind of add water as normal, and it's a wonderful slick soap. Already, we've got a very nice looking lather. So I won't be able to tell you how much soap, how much water is going to match this 30 second load but hey the world won't end and besides uh, the amount of water measurement there is just intended not as anything exact but to just give you a ballpark if you're having trouble getting your soaps hydrated properly now look, we've got a really nice creamy appearance here. Not a lot of jagged points, right? Not a moonscape type situation. Those are things to look for. We can pull the lather down and then kind of pull it up to see. Oh, you see how that, oh man, I think I got the angle wrong. If you, uh, look how it collapses. That's something to notice because that tells you the viscosity of the soap the lather. With some soaps, if you take it that far, if they are soaps that are in, have been designed to have a higher structure, then that means that it's, it's much too watery, much too wet. But with good soaps that are designed to, well, I call them good soaps, but with my favorite soaps that are designed to take a bunch of water and still stay creamy like this, that is the, that's the goal. That's where you want to get to. Well, I believe this guy might be about right. Look at him. You can also pull a big dollop out and then hold it in midair. Watch what it does. Does it move? It doesn't move at all. With many soaps, you need to keep adding water. Ah, see what's going on? Yeah, look at that dollop. Look at that long peak. That's something to notice. Drier lathers will have shorter peaks. So let's use this guy right here. What a nice consistency of lather. I just recorded a previous video about how using Williams Mug Soap is a great way to have a brush cleaning soap without being very expensive. It'll clean off almost all of the oils that you might be concerned with uh, that might gather on your brush after a while. Instead of having to buy a specific brush cleaning soap, and it may cost you $12, $15, Williams Mug does a great job. All right, and that coupled with an occasional, if you have hard water, occasional vinegar solution soak should keep your brushes in great shape. Get my face wet now. All right. So I like the backbone of this brush. And I'm hoping that the, the tips will kind of, oh, let me get water out of my goatee. I don't want it to wash out my lather. Nice big bloom. 
and I think it's just a 24.5 millimeter knot. So they must have given it a good amount of loft to make up for some backbone. The tips are very soft. They're not as soft as like a finest badger with gel tips. They're not as soft as a few of the other silver tips out there. But you know what? Some people don't like full cloud puppy dog type softness. I generally do, but this is a pretty comfy softness. And it may change over time. Thin looking lather, right? Probably just right in terms of performance. The scent is pleasant, kind of outdoorsy. I think the notes are blending in really well. I still can't discern the orange type notes of the bergamot. Unfortunately, the sage is not very dominant, so I'm happy about that. All right, we've worked it enough. So now we'll just do some painting passes like this. Looks like I do have plenty of soap so the 32nd, I'm sorry, plenty of lather. So the 32nd load looks like a good, good one. All right, let's see how the pole silver does in the game changer. 68 gap, open comb. The 68 being a very mild razor. So mild I had to share it, uh, sell mine. A very good comfort here. I do feel the edge a little bit. And that often is a very good sign. It is moving through the extra half day stubble with no problem. The first pass will stick to more with the grain motions here. non-shavable area down there and as I have done on a few occasions we can take kind of the, the goatee lather and use that to do an extra pass this is some nice lather you see how it's kind of dripping with some lathers that's with some soap formulations that's perfect And rinse. Now this mix right here, this soap and water ratio, uh, didn't give me a really creamy first rinse, but my skin's very oily and sometimes that affects that first pass. And you can also just add some more, a little bit more soap or less water if you want to make your lathers more creamy or less creamy. The brush also feels softer now. You know why? Because I don't have that longer stubble on my face. So that, your amount of existing stubble can definitely affect your perception of how the brush, uh, whether it's soft or not, that sort of thing. From the sound of this and the feel of it being so smooth, Looks like the first pass did a great job of taking care of a lot of that stubble. Very high comfort right here. And that is probably what most of the guys are going to be looking at that might, you know, consider this razor. Because it's the lower gap and it's a notoriously mild lower gap. And that 
might deliver some guys exactly the kind of comfort that they're not able to find from other razors. In terms of the comfort level, this looks like a great razor and blade combination. Oh, very nice comfort during that maneuver as well. This is where I'll often get a little bit of uh, irritation. Very nice. When I go uh, switch directions on that area right there. And uh, a rinse. Well, I'm pretty sure we've got a great shave already. But why not? Do pass three. And that's about as much soap as I like to have at the end. So pretty much perfect in terms of loading. I like this brush. You know, those little spines around the, the waist of the handle. Uh, ridges, we call them ridges. They didn't bother me as much today as I did the first time I used that brush. Interesting. And I'm going to do the same cross grain pattern. I can even put in a little bit of an upturn. Slant motion there. Cut a little closer. So you kind of like that. Or I'm, I'm moving diagonally. I'm not tilting the, the head in this to keep it perpendicular. I'm actually got it moving the head at a slant like that. That's a, uh, if you've got a trouble area, some type of slant maneuver can be a great way to cut closely. Yeah, I might say this lather is kind of on the wet side of, of perfect, but I don't really mind it dripping this much. It's not really an inconvenient, you know, amount of dripping. Oh yeah, nice comfort during that maneuver right there. And that is not often the case, even with good razors and good blades. So, the last phase of the evaluation of this razor and blade as a combo is the closeness. So I'll get a good rinse here and take a look at things. There is kind of a general shadow there. And I see length in a few tips, and that's just what can happen sometimes when you're pushing the edge of your comfort level, where it's it's so comfortable that it's it can start to drop off in terms of efficiency, and that's just what can happen sometimes. And the 68 solid bar definitely did that with me, where often the blade I was using, it was just super comfortable and smooth, but it just didn't cut very well. Now this cut pretty well. Uh, this is definitely a workable shave. I could go into most jobs and nobody would remark about the shave, even somebody who was standing pretty close to me. But there are a good many other razors and blade combinations that will be almost as comfortable, maybe even just as comfortable, but will cut me closer. So this wasn't quite a win, but it's a good shave. And I'm also glad uh, for the opportunity to try this base plate out and get some Good information out there online for you guys about this particular setting. So hopefully you find it if you're interested in researching about this. And we've got some Executive Man from Sterling as the balm. This is the uh, dupe of Creed Aventus, which I just found out it's a really expensive cologne if you want to buy the real thing. very expensive who knows maybe that's why it's popular but to be honest i just think it's a good scent and so i'm glad we have folks that produce reasonably priced versions and of course in many cases you know don't don't be mad they're not trying to take away from the sales of creed i definitely wouldn't be buying <laughs> wouldn't be buying creed uh, even if I wasn't able to find a dupe of this scent because of the cost. But one of the things they do is a company like Sterling might take a sample of Creed, send it to a 
place that examines the scent, uh, the composition of something. And so they can send back a report to Sterling and, and other makers about what's in there. And I think what they often find out is that there's a certain uh, element, a certain ingredient that's in there that is really expensive and that affects the quality of the product. And so that's why you can get maybe a Sterling um, EDT, a Sterling cologne that's patterned after Aventus, but it maybe not last quite as long as Aventus. And uh, because Aventus just has a slightly different makeup and Sterling's not going to be able to produce the same uh, quality of product because they're not, they're going to choose not to get those expensive ingredients because they, I mean, after all, they're trying to bring it to people like me. And so I'll tolerate having a scent that doesn't last quite as long if I only have to pay, you know, what, $24 from Sterling to get something that smells, you know, pretty close. So I don't think of it as a property rights infringement, you know, or anything like that, because they're not actually producing the exact same product. And in, in many cases, especially like with those Dollar, Dollar Street colognes, I've bought a bunch of those and they just, they might smell, some of them smell nice, but they're not going to last like a real cologne does. And so, you know, I'm cool with dupes like that because they're not doing the same role and, and the different people are going to buy, you know, each uh, different one. All right. Well, smells good. The scent was very light on the soap as I was using it. Three, four out of ten. For me, I'd say a three, but to, to communicate to most other people, especially people who might load a little heavier, let's say four out of ten. But it was pleasant. A little bit of an outdoorsy nature to it. Pretty cool. I thought it was pretty cool. Unfortunately, I've got tons of other soaps that I probably like a little bit better, but if I had this soap um, if I had just had to grab a couple of items and head out on a trip for a month, and if I only had this soap, I'd be fine with it. Very nice. Great performance. I'd say maybe this is on the wet side of the perfection spectrum. Sorry about that. Uh, you could go a little bit less water and, and have it be a little bit more creamy. The rinses felt very nice after pass number two and three. So nice kind of a luxury feel to it. Anything else to report? I don't know. As always, give your brush a good thorough rinsing to get out all the soap, all the lather, and don't store them in a medicine cabinet. That's an enclosed environment. It needs the ability to dry with uh, fresh air around it, so, or a dry air around it. You might be able to get, get away with a medicine cabinet if you're in a very dry, desert-like location, um, you know, Phoenix, something like that. But generally, don't put it in a closed area because it needs to be able to, uh, we don't want mold or mildew to build up. So this is just a 24.5 millimeter knot and it has got a big bloom. Uh, very comfortable. I wouldn't mind if this is my only brush, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm undecided. I may remove these ridges. However, I may just sell this because uh, Zenith does make one with a more contoured barber handle. It's a little bit longer, doesn't have any ridges in the middle. Um, just kind of like that, uh, what, B23, B29 bore that I have. It's that same handle from Zenith. And uh, and if I end up really liking this brush, I might just have to uh, buy that one. Get the, get the better handle. But this was an inexpensive purchase online uh, from another fellow shaver. And it let me try out, because I haven't seen very many used Zenith silver tips out there. And I think maybe I know why, because they're really nice. I will say about the, this silver tip is that it is kind of characteristic of the silver tips. It's not going to have the backbone of a finest badger. And that's kind of why I like it. But if you're looking for something with a lot of scrub, this is not going to be the brush for you. This is more comfort, luxury, plush kind of experience. Another reason I chose Spearhead for today's shave among the different soaps I brought in this trip is that Spearhead has purchased the property rights and formulations to the old Seaforth label, which is a vintage. If you look for vintage stuff on shaving stuff on eBay, you will occasionally see some Seaforth stuff. Uh, really neat. And uh, he has brought back. And if he's using this soap base or something like it, 
and man, you know it's going to be a good lathering soap. So performance is going to be top for that one. And I, I just ordered some. It came out a couple of days ago on Maggard Razors and on Spearhead Shavings website. They had sold out, but they also sent some to Top of the Chain in Canada. And so I paid just a little bit more in shipping, but they did have some in stock. And so I was able to get, uh, I just wanted to support the company, small business. He's been great with these experimental soaps under his own brand. He also produces a, seems like a nice guy. Um, he's been very uh, easy to interact with online. Um, he, he's on Reddit as well. He, first I ever heard about him before he started making soaps were these travel kits for your razor, for your three-piece razor. And it was patterned after the khaki Gillette kit that had these, it's a, it's a rectangle in the middle, but then it had these flaps. And it had some long ones over here that you would fold in first. And then you would fold in the, the bottom and the top and they would have a snap enclosure to keep everything tight. And you would have a, a three-piece razor like this. You would disassemble it and then the head would be on one uh, tucked into one part of it and the handle would be in a sleeve somewhere else. And so it's a great way to encapsulate everything. I think it had a little bit of blade storage. Uh, and if they're a little bit on the pricey side, $17, $18, um, maybe just a touch more for that kit. And that kind of put me off of it just a little bit. But a lot of people are really enjoying them. And I don't really travel with uh, those kind of razors very much. But these days I am starting to see some more use about that. Uh, and what I do is I take the whole razor without the blade in it, of course. And I'll take an eyeglass case from the Dollar Tree and I'll just put it in there. And that's my kit for $1. Uh, but if you want to be go for something a little nicer, the Spearhead Travel Kit might be a good uh, good thing right up your alley. Some people even bought the Factory Seconds, where maybe some sewing or a logo was not exactly right. Save, I don't know, five, seven bucks. I can't remember exactly what he said. Uh, but those are some things to check out from Spearhead if you're interested. And so I was able to order the Heather was one of the scents, and then Spiced was the other scent. And I am really looking forward to it, especially now that I've tried the base, a couple of different iterations of the base, and I've been very happy both times. Uh, so I know that the performance is going to be good. I can see the, um, the Heather, the notes on the Heather indicated that, you know, maybe it, it depends on which notes were, uh, my nose will picked up on the most, you know, it might be a miss, but, um, uh, but I'm still supporting the business and I'll be able to sell the used tub because they are sold out for now at least. Um, I'll be able to sell the used tub if I need to. Uh, but the spiced might be one to keep around. Who knows? Who knows how things go? Um, but I'm looking forward to it. Nice kind of classic packaging as well. Anyway, that's enough. And no, I don't have any relation to the, the company. Um, I just am passing on stuff that seems cool as a fellow consumer. All right, well, face feels great. Um, I didn't get any irritation or anything like that during the shave, and that's pretty much a guarantee with the Game Changer 68 Gap, whether it's a solid bar or open comb. And uh, I got a close enough shave. The smell was nice. The I'm enjoying the Executive Man hovering around. There's definitely no conflict. The soap was so light during the shave that it's not having any problem conflicting with the post-shave product. Brush felt great. I think it did feel better after the cleaning with Williams. All right. Hey, it's time to get some lunch. Uh, you guys take care. Thanks for watching. And I hope there's been something good in this video for you. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. Take care.